I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank the members of the City Council who are here. I, I can see uh, Councilman, the Vice President of the City Councilman, ca the Vice President of the Council, Councilman Ed Reisinger, as well as uh, Third District Councilman uh, Bobby Curran. I, if there's another councilman or woman here, please make yourself known and I'll get you in there. I want to, I, I cannot thank enough uh, my, my neighbors, uh, the citizens of Baltimore who are standing, and community leaders who are here. I know that you have busy lives, and I am truly grateful that you've taken time to stand with me as we talk about the, the progress uh, that we've made, but also the, the plans uh, and recommendations uh, for the future. You know, because I've said it to you before, I depend on each and every one of you in order to make a, a safer city. And uh, by being here, you're, you are reaffirming your commitment to working in partnership for a safer city. I want to thank the members of my cabinet. Uh, we are all in one accord working very hard to ensure that Baltimore becomes one of the safest big cities in the country. And I'm just pleased with the, the work uh, that we've been doing, because we understand it doesn't matter if, it's, if you're with the health department, the police department, or visit Baltimore. Uh, the, safety, the, the public safety matters to each and every one of us, and, and I'm pleased that, that we are here. I want to thank um, Bob Wasserman. I can't see you, but I know that you oh. <laughs> That's why I can't see you. I'm covering the eye on the back of my head today. <laughs> Uh, Bob, I want to thank you and your team for joining us as we release a strategic set of recommendations to keep, continue to move us forward in the crime fight. I want to thank our public, the police commissioner, too, for his continued leadership and his service to Baltimore. Uh, the commissioner has engaged with Mr. Wasserman, has been engaged with Mr. Washington, uh, Wasserman every step of the way. And I'd also like to acknowledge, and I don't know if uh, the governor has sent a representative, but I want to uh, acknowledge Governor O'Malley in helping to secure funding uh, for this, uh, helping us to secure funding for this report. So the fight to reduce crime is my administration's top priority. We have been focusing our crime strategy around the core principles of targeting the most violent repeat offenders gangs and drug dealers while working every day to improve relationships with the communities as well as to modernize the police force. Under Commissioner Bass's leadership and the assistance from our state partners, we commissioned this report with an eye toward the future. We understand that crime is not static. What worked in previous years may not work now or in the future. Criminals adapt and so, was, so must we in order to continue to keep our city safe. Today's report provides us with a very thoughtful set of recommendations for how we can more effectively and more efficiently move and meet the current challenges that we meet in the crime fight. The report speaks some honest and hard truths about where we need to make improvements while acknowledging that many of our current efforts are taking us in the right direction. Many of the recommended, uh, recommended reforms have already been put into place thanks to the leadership of Commissioner Batts and the hard work of our police officers. After reading the report, I can see that the Commissioner, Mr. Wasserman, and I are of like minds. A commitment to proactive crime fighting methods is apparent. Targeting the arrest of violent repeat offenders, removing guns and drugs from our streets while maintaining a high level of trust and confidence with the community. I cannot stress that enough. I, I've said this when I've come to your community meetings and to many of you when I've talked to you um, in, in private. I know in my heart what's possible for Baltimore when it comes to safety. But I also know that in order for us to see a dramatic change in public safety, the only way that we will achieve that is by working arm in arm with each and every one of our communities. We have to be in this together. It also, the recommendations fall right in line with my own beliefs on how we can best combat crime in our city. As Commissioner Batts and I work very uh, diligently to lower crime in Baltimore, we know that there's no more valuable resource than the folks that are right here in this room. While this report largely focuses on the police department, everyone here today, regardless of your department or the community that you serve, is vital. 
and everyone is committed to the number one pu uh, public safety issue in our city, reducing the number of lives that are being lost on the streets of Baltimore. Every person that is standing with me today represents a cross-agency collaboration and community integration that will ultimately lead to decreased levels of violence, but also to fewer cases of drug addiction, reduction in recidivism, and reduction in youth violence. We have a team that understands that to build bridges with local communities and to work in collaborations with schools, with businesses, with clergy, everyone in, in between uh, is essential in order to effectively target the reasons for violence in our city. We have made progress, but I don't think any of us are satisfied, nor should we be, with the level of violence that we have in our city. I'll never shake the feeling I have of having to console a family who has lost a loved one to senseless violence. Their faces and their stories continue to motivate the work and strengthen my resolve in, make, in, in fighting for a safer city. Again, I want to thank Mr. Wasserman and his entire team, and I look forward to continuing the brisk pace of reform um, that Commissioner Batts has already begun. And now I'd like to turn it over to the Commissioner to say a few words. Commissioner? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Always appreciate your support. You know, I just, <clears throat> before I get started on my comments, I'd just like to uh, share and thank uh, this very diverse group of faces that are here, many that I work with on a regular basis, uh, part of the community, advisory groups. We have teammates that are in the city. We have Dr. Barbeau to my left, who's also in the crime fight and the things that she does. I have the finance director, Harry Black, who's back there in the back in his support. Uh, so what you see symbolically today, as we stand here as a group in mind, in my, and not uh, to, to uh, not detract from my great command staff that stands here too, is that the only way we can do this is in collaboration. And we stand here as a team, as a city, as a community to say that we are taking this all very seriously. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and council members. Distinguished guests, members of my command staff, Thank you for being here during this unprecedented moment in the history of the Baltimore Police Department. This moment would not be possible without the support of the mayor. Her unwavering support has been vital, not just in securing the necessary funding to make this report possible, but the strong leadership she has shown throughout this process. Madam Mayor, thank you so very much. We have, we've, we have a sacred duty to protect the residents and citizens, businesses, and visitors of our great city. And from day one as police commissioner, I've, ob I've observed a very proud department filled with talented and dedicated police officers and command staff. I further observed a department that was operating in outdated ways and needed a new direction. This too was recognized by the Fraternal Order of Police who under Bob Cherry's leadership drafted their own blueprint, which is unheard of for a union to do. Their hard work did not go unrecognized in this document. We require a top-down, we required a top-down review of our practices, our policies, and our procedures. Police departments are complicated corporations. Issues are rarely simplistic or singularly focused. There are no monolithic answers. Everything from the way we fill out crime reports, our field training program, the staffing of our districts, teaching and tracking of the use of force and our response to calls for service impacts public safety in the crime fight. This document is built to be dynamic. It will not stay the same. It will adapt. It will change. We will take input from our officers, from the FOP, from our command staff. The document will change as the city changes, as the organiza organization changes. Leading that crime fight will, while conducting a review of this magnitude is like changing a tire on a car going 60 miles per hour. I needed outside eyes. I needed people who were not vested in the culture. I needed people who would ask very tough questions of everything. That's what was done. The strategic police partnership led by Robert Wasserman along with the Bratton Group, is comp has comprised a nationally recognized, comprised of, excuse me, a nationally recognized experts. They have a large amount of exposure under them and experience. With our help and our direction, they presented us with the opportunity to conduct the first comprehensive review in Baltimore Police Department recent memory. We needed a long-range comprehensive plan for the department to work towards 
implementation of best practices seen across the country. This is our corporate business plan. This assessment was more than just a glance at operating and administrative procedures of the Baltimore Police Department. It was a nuts and bolts dismantling of the agency to see how things worked. We looked under the hood. We poked into cracks and crevices. Nothing was kept off limits. Everything was fair game. This plan has 160 recommendations. 120, Harry, 122 are budget neutral. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's eight of that 122 are, have cost savings, dramatic cost savings for the city. Long range, 38, 38 of them are to, be to, 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 excuse me, are to be determined and we need to sit down and work with the finance office to build a plan long range to address these. It was better to take time to do it right than to rush through this process. We have been making significant changes and did not wait for this document to come out. We continue to make changes. We know that we, we have a long way to go. We do a lot of things very well. This organization is dynamite at tracking down bad guys. You can see that when we put up public enemy number one. Some say that's a PR stunt. Let me assure you, it's not. These are seriously bad guys. We don't put them up there that we can catch them fast. The, organiza the organization stands up to the challenge. The organization is extremely good at catching bad guys. However, we have some weaknesses, and we have things that we can improve and things that we can grow. It was therefore necessary and vitally important to conduct the assessment to make sure that the people of Baltimore, the people of Baltimore, the residents of Baltimore, have a police department that they deserve and that their tax money goes towards. Over the course of the last several months, we have been examined from top to bottom across all nine districts and through every unit in the agency. Our practices, our methods, our procedures have been put through stringent evaluation. After months of review and analysis, the report is completed and is proudly presented to, to the people of Baltimore. This afternoon, it will be online publicly so you can download all pieces of the administrative strategic plan. It is my goal to give the hardworking officers protecting the city the tools to get their jobs done. The strategic recommendations presented this afternoon are a roadmap to achieving the mayor's goal. The recommendations are an outline to much needed, long sought after reform within the Baltimore Police Department. We have a goal of being the best department. We have a goal of being one of the greatest in the state. We have a goal of being one of the finest in the nation. The citizens of Baltimore, Baltimore deserve no less. Reform and change come slowly, but they will come. The implementation of these recommendations will not happen overnight, though they will happen. These recommendations are presented to the people of Baltimore so they can hold us strictly accountable. These recommendations are presented to the people of Baltimore so that we can be as transparent as possible. We are peeling the layers of the onion back so you all can observe our growth. These recommendations are presented to the people of Baltimore because it's only by working together, we here in this room, that we will create a safer Baltimore. And finally, let me applaud the hardworking men and women and the long, the long and courageous decision-making of our command staff because I am very proud of the work that they do. These are steps to becoming a leader in the community of law enforcement, police departments. Madam Mayor, I present to you the strategic corporate business plan for the Baltimore Police Department. Thank you so very much. All right, we have time for a few questions. I wanted to know if um, you want to adopt all of the recommendations, and is there a realistic time frame, like five years from now? I know it's, some could be implemented. So many of the already. things we've already already done. But the, the, the important thing I want you to understand is this is an evaluation with strategic recommendations for the future. And the reason why uh, all of the agencies are here, and more importantly, why the community members who I've asked to be here is, is 
uh, we want to hear from them as well. We want feedback. We want to talk about the strategic uh, recommendations and uh, talk about the, the, the pace and the, the schedule, uh, the priority of implementation with the people that we serve. You know, this is a, a very um, well-executed evaluation or analysis of uh, the department and our, um, our strategies and uh, with recommendations. But now the, the work, the reason why it's online now is so we can start to get the feedback and start to, um, to lay the groundwork for putting the, the, um, you know, the recommendations into action. Madam Mayor, is it fair to say that this is more going to go towards that outcome-based policing strategy? That's what I gather from when I was going over the report today. I think the I think that's where the whole city is. You know, we we are an outcome-based budgeting city. This is all about performance uh, and how we can work better, faster, and smarter, and and more efficiently. Commissioner, in the uh, section about internal struggles, uh, the, the nine percent of the police officers Concerns about fairness of promotions and how they're distributed. These are not easy fixes. How, how do you go about doing that? When I walked in the door, uh, my employees did say exactly those things the day that I walked in. I asked the question, what is it that are, are the things that are impacting you? And it's good that you guys get to see the things that we're trying to address and some of the moves that uh, we're trying to make. I, I, I think it's easier than what you think. Uh, morale as a whole is something we have to work on. There's a lot of uh, complexity to that. But uh, we need to establish fair promotional systems. Uh, one of the things that I shared in org organization the day I walked in is that we're pushing out clicks. We're pushing out uh, um, all negative things. Everyone has an opportunity. Everyone has a chance. Basically, we're looking for the brightest and the best of the organization. That's how we're, we're going to call them, by balls and strikes. There's also a section about a recommendation to review police-involved shootings and maybe change the policy on use of force. Can we expect that tasers will be implemented into that, and what other possible changes in that policy? Every type of use of force that we have will be documented, will be tracked, and will be reviewed, whether it's hands, feet, tasers, batons, flashlights, uh, uh, tasers, and, uh, and uh, our handguns also. So every, every force or every use of force will be tracked, it will be reviewed, and we, we will be held accountable for that. Uh, we've already started those pieces and started putting those things in place now. There's been lots of areas of the agency that have, where there are rules in place, there are oversights in place, and it's later revealed that they're not being followed. This plan recommends so many new things that are being put in place, new teams, new oversight functions. Is the department biting off more than it can chew in that area? I don't think we're biting off more than we can chew. The, the community has demands, and what it demands is having a professional organization that polices in a constitutional way and it is fair and just as we go out into the streets. Uh, we're going to win that confidence back from all angles of this community. Uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do is uh, that we're taking, we have many different types of policies within, within our organizations. We have uh, documents that come from the police commissioner, we have GOs, we have this, we have that, and I think there's somewhere close to about six different types of policies. It causes confusion within the organization. We've already started a process and a plan. We're uh, four months into an 18-month plan to consolidate all those different types of policies into one document that uh, clarifies what our expectations are and we're going to hold the organization accountable to those standards. The FOP, one of their main concerns in their blueprint for you was updating the crime map, reallocating officers. Where does that fall in your priority list and how long will that get done? Hi. <laughs> uh, I think the FOP was very, uh, very correct. When I walked in the door, I read that from cover to cover. Uh, they made, they hit a lot of the, the crucial points, and they did a very good job. Uh, part of that uh, deals with our computer, computer aided dispatch system, our field based reporting system. So we have to reconstruct all those pieces. Part of doing that it also comes that we need to put. Uh, computers in the hands of our police officers. We have to be a lot more efficient in how we get our job done. So not only correcting the, the boundaries of our districts, not only correcting the smallest geographic areas which are post, but also aligning our deployment and putting police officers where they need to be at the time that they, they need to be, checking our priority system where we dispatch officers out to calls. We have a lot of realignment to do, and we're going to do that over the next 12 months as we uh, kind of build into our field-based reporting system. A few more questions. Uh, one of my previous employment, uh, I uh, outfitted all police officers in uniforms with body cameras. 
uh, at that location. I was one of the, the first uh, agency heads to do that. What I learned from that process is there's a lot of policy issues that need to be worked through. Uh, when I did that two or three years ago, what I didn't focus on, and we need to focus on here before we move that direction, there's HIPAA violations that go on. Uh, officers go into homes where you have sexual assault. Uh, there's a lot of privacy issues. Um, uh, the issue is you have the press. You have a right to get a hold of those things uh, that the camera records. Sometimes we go into very sensitive situations. We have to work those things out within policy. So before we jump, I think it's a good idea. Before we jump, one, I have to address those policy concerns. Two, I have to sit down with the FOP and address their concerns also at the same time. There was also a recommendation for a new um, Public Information Act group. Um, but it seemed that this was um, aimed to make less information come out, not more information come out. Can you explain what you I mean? think what, what you see from uh, my style and here today and along with the mayor as we stand shoulder to shoulder is just the opposite. We're giving out all the information we possibly can that is legal, that doesn't uh, uh, put my officers in jeopardy or constrain them. Uh, long range, uh, what I like to do, uh, especially when it deals with the media, we need to have 24-hour coverage that you have the ability to call in, get information, get data. We don't have the personnel to do that right now, but the long range plan is to do a better job. I like to use our Twitter system a little differently to push out uh, more information and subdivide the districts into individual districts. Uh, we don't have the structure to do that at this point in time, but we're going to get better, faster, and uh, more sophisticated in how we get data out to the citizens. And so we don't have to go to middle, through the middle man or middle person. We go right to the community and get data information. These new uh, reports on use of force, can you make those public? Um, I, my personal opinion is I don't have a problem with however that's a personnel issues. When you have officers who may be under discipline, that becomes personnel issues. It falls under the, the Maryland Law Enforcement Bill of Rights. I have to go by those standards.